Hi friends, I am Lynn Lily from Craft Box Girls and Craft Box Kids and I'm excited to be back with another fun Crayola craft. And this week it is all about making jewelry with one of my favorite Crayola products and that is Model Magic. Okay, so if you don't know what Model Magic is, it's magic, period. <laughs> Just kidding, but it does kind of have some magic in it. So it is an air dry clay. That's right. So think about a nice soft clay and then you just let it sit out in the air and it dries. And once it dries, you can display it, you can use it and it's still nice and soft and lightweight. So we're going to make some fun kid jewelry today. You may have seen that trending clay jewelry and it's usually oven baked clay jewelry is really popular for adults, right? So I probably don't want to get that for kids, right? It's too nice. So what about having them make their own jewelry and we can use some of the same techniques. So I've got a bunch of different colors of Model Magic here. I have one of my favorite packs, which is the Shimmer Pack. I absolutely love this one because it's shimmery and sparkly. But Model Magic comes in a whole bunch of different options. You can get multi-packs that have smaller, like half ounce bags in it. You can also get giant bags like you see here, um, and those can come in big tubs, okay? So there's a whole bunch of different options. You can always go to Crayola.com, find out what they have at the local stores by you. All right, so to get started, I've already got my packs open, but I'm gonna pull them out. And we're gonna make some earrings. Um, I recommend using Model Magic for jewelry making to make things like earrings or a bracelet, because um, it's nice and lightweight and it won't get dinged up too much. I've got a non-stick surface on here, so a countertop would work for this, but if you've got paper down, it may stick to the paper, so just keep that in mind. And then I may take an extra color out of it. I'm gonna do some, we'll add some neon pink in too. All right, now, I've also got a rolling pin. You can use any non-stick rolling pin, just make sure that you use one that you're always gonna use for crafting. So to start, I'm gonna pick a base. We'll start with purple. I always usually roll into a ball to get started with whatever I'm making. And then I'm gonna roll it out. You don't wanna go too thin, but also you don't wanna go too, too thick, okay? So about a quarter inch is usually good for your thickness. And you wanna figure out what kind of shape you wanna get out of it. So you'll wanna use some punches. Now, Model Magic has these really cute little Model Magic tools and you get things like a circle or a heart in it. So you can use those. Or if you have other little cookie style cutters, remember again, only use them for crafting. You can use those as well. I've got this little flower one that we're gonna use. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're doing, especially if you're doing earrings, you're gonna be able to fit two of whatever you're doing on your surface, all right? So roll it out big enough to get two. And then we're gonna start with little, just dabs, right? You can just pull off little pieces and we're gonna stick it all around alternating colors on here, okay? And you can choose to do however many colors you want. It's up to you. You could add in white if you wanted. You could keep it three colors. You could just do these. I'm gonna put in, I'm actually gonna add in some neon green too. Why not throw in some more colors? I've got some neon green here. We'll make it crazy colored. This kind of gives me like a parents who are watching like an 80s vibe. All right, so we'll roll those all in there. And you wanna put a bunch. Don't worry about them being too close, too far. Don't worry about them being random shapes. It does not matter. Put a little bit more there. Maybe one there. Oh, maybe we'll throw in some neon here. More neon. Who doesn't want more neon and sparkles, right? Okay, I just got a little crazy there, but I get excited. Okay, and hmm, is there any other color? Maybe I want to put... I could put, well, that's about the same shade. Okay, we'll stop there. I could go a little crazy with this. So now that we've got all of our little bundles on there, right, they're all nice and stuck, we're gonna use our rolling pin again, and we're just gonna roll over it. So the idea is that we're going to flatten those pieces into our original piece that we had out, okay? And so you wanna roll it out, it will get bigger, right? You don't wanna roll it too, too thin, but you wanna roll it so that those are all become one, right? So there's no difference in texture. They're all kind of molded together. All right, so now we have our base, which is a really cool, fun pattern. As you do this more and more, you can kind of get creative with how you put the pieces on to create your own patterns. But let's go ahead and roll with our circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out, wow, where do I wanna stamp my circle? What do I wanna see in it? I'm gonna go, remember I gotta get two, so you don't wanna go too far in the middle. 
So we're going to go ahead and take one out of there, okay? And we'll go ahead and take another one. Now, we're going to pull those out in just a sec. Okay, don't destroy your piece yet, though, because we're going to still punch some more stuff out of that. Go ahead and get these guys out. And we can smooth out the edges in just a second, right? So we'll put those there. If it gets a little misshapen, the nice part is you can always kind of reshape it back. It's nice and flexible until it dries. Okay, so we still got some left. Remember I said we had the little teeny tiny, where'd I put my little, I had a little flower guy. Where'd I put him? Where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go? All right, so I had the little flower one. I'm not 100% sure where'd he go. Oh, there he is, got it. He blended in with everything. All right, so we got this little flower one. I'm gonna go ahead and punch that one out. And if you've got like a toothpick, you'll need a toothpick later on, but a toothpick can help um, pull out some of the things if there's teeny tiny ones. And let's go ahead and do another one, maybe right there. Pick that out. And you could do a bunch of these, depending on what kind of earrings you want to make. These will be like little pieces, little piece connectors. So if you want to do more, you can. All right. And maybe you don't know exactly what colors you want, so you punch out a few more. All right. Now, what you need to do... You've got your pieces. We're not done with this piece yet, okay? We're going to use that piece in just a sec, but we need to go ahead and poke our holes, right? So figure out where you want your earring, where do you want the top of your earring to be? I'm gonna say right here. You wanna poke it somewhat close to the edge because we're gonna have to put a jump ring in there. And you'll use your toothpick to make a nice little hole in there, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing in this one. And then you've gotta let them dry, okay? So you're gonna to need to let them air dry for a couple hours. You don't wanna go ahead and put your jump rings in until they're nice and air dry. Now with our little teeny tiny flowers, we need to poke two holes. So one towards the top and one towards the bottom because it's gonna be a connector piece in between our jump rings. So we need to be able to put two jump rings through it, okay? So we poke holes in the top and the bottom, right? And then we let all of these air dry, okay? Your holes just need to be big enough to put a jump ring through. And if you don't know what a jump ring is, this is, I'm gonna try and get a little closer, that is a jump ring, okay? So teeny tiny little jewelry ring that you can use pliers to pull apart. Now, check out, let me see, I've got some fun, little square ones that we took the same little flower in between. You could do circle ones without the connector like that, right? So really fun and easy. And then once they're dry, they're ready to go. So a few hours, then you'll add your jump rings to it. And that would be a part that an adult definitely needs to help with because you need to use pliers to open up those jump rings. Now, here's another really fun and easy one. Maybe your kid's ears aren't pierced. I don't have my ears pierced, by the way. Um, that's a story for another day. All right, so what you can do to make some beads is use this excess, right? So we're gonna use this excess and we're gonna ball it up, okay? We roll it together. And you can see it's really fun and mixed together. Now, if you're just gonna make beads, you could do this by just mixing them together to start, just take your colors and meld them together. But what you can do is pull off a little bit, roll it in a ball, Okay, we're gonna make donut beads, as I call them. Make them as big or as small as you want. Take your toothpick, poke it all the way through, and you'll see it flattens a little bit, that's why I call it a donut. And you wanna wiggle it, and then I always go back through this side so that the holes are kind of even. And then if you need to, you can kind of shape it back together, but you see that you have a nice little hole. Those are donut beads, really easy to make. So that's, you can make a donut bead or you can also make a football bead. So I'll show you a football bead really quick and then I'll show them to you on a bracelet. So all we do with football bead, same thing, we roll it into a ball and then we kind of just go like that, okay? And you can kind of roll it out just a little bit and then pinch it at the end with your fingers. So that gives you a longer bead and then you stick a toothpick and I twist my toothpick. As I'm going through, I twist it. Instead of pushing it through, I twist it. It makes a nice cleaner hole. And then I can kind of wiggle it to make sure my hole's big enough. Twist it back out. And then do the same thing on this end. Twist it in and then you can kind of form your beads. Back, just making sure that you leave your hole open and you've got a football bead. Now, again with the beads, you wanna let them air dry for a few minutes. 
or a few, excuse me, a few hours, let them air dry. And then when they're done, you can make your very own bracelet. How cool is that? With those or with the donut beads, all that fun model magic is swirled together. Now I put mine on wire, so I want you to see, I put it on some wire. And this is 22 gauge bracelet wire. You could put it on string, you could put it on yarn, but if you want it to hold its shape, you can get some wire at the craft store. And then because there was little pokey ends at the end of the wire, I bended them into place, but I wrapped a ribbon around it to cover those up. So especially for kids, so that it does not poke them. Wrapped a ribbon around a few times, tied it in a knot, and then you add a bow and it's the perfect little accessory. Okay, so easy. Peasy, how cute are these? I love it. Peasy peasy little jewelry that you can make at home with your kids. Maybe you've got a future aspiring jewelry designer that you don't know. They may discover their love for jewelry by making it with Model Magic. You never know, right? All right, that's it for this week's project. Make sure that you head over to Crayola.com slash crafts for more fun project ideas. Follow me over at Craftbox Girls and at Craftbox Kids. I've got lots of fun kids projects and stuff for the whole family. All right, I'll be back in just a few weeks with some more fun projects. Bye, friends.